Hey guys, are you feeling stuck or just getting started in your career? I've been there. I spent the last six years developing skills that have landed me a high paying job with my creative background. And the big secret is that anyone can learn to do what I do. So in this video, I'm gonna break down my career trajectory, the like most important jobs that I've had, the projects that I've accomplished and why they're important and the skills that I developed uh, to get and like advance in those positions. This one's gonna be a long one guys, so check out the timestamps below for an easy way to jump around to a particular point in my career if that's what you're more interested in. All right, so to kick things off, I'm gonna bring it all the way back to 2018 when I was a recent college graduate making 17 50 an hour I had a bachelor's in fine art degree in photography with a minor in art history. So not a degree that you'd expect to make a lot of money by any stretch of the imagination. One thing that I did have going for me at this point though was a bunch of internships and part-time jobs under my belt. And you can see what my resume looked like on the side over here at this point. As you can see, my resume at this point is very heavy on like hard technical skills and doing actual work that produces creative or like loosely manages it with some of the art gallery positions. Fast forward to March of 2019, I get hired as a photography assistant at a children's book publishing company. <laughs> it's exciting, <laughs> I know. And that was really my first salaried position working in an office. I was getting paid about $40,000 a year at this time. And I was commuting in rush hour, two hours each way from Long Island to New Rochelle, New York. That shit sucked. <laughs> I hated that so much, but I did it for a long time. But I learned a lot in this position and I made a great professional connection with my manager at the time who was the head of the photography department. The day-to-day -day role in that was really a mix of basic data entry and setting up basic like photography and marketing and shoots. The big project that I really worked on was rolling out a digital asset management or DAM system with my manager at the time. This was my first time learning about system configuration. This is really my first intro to SaaS systems outside of the Adobe suite and the program that we were using was called Woodwing. It was great because I learned a lot around building use cases, presenting ideas to executive leadership, and really creative operations as a whole. This was like my first introduction to that because of my manager's background. He was really like keen on imparting this wisdom and this career path to me, and I'm super grateful to him for it. I left that job after about 10 months of working there, the commute was too much, and I really wanted a job in the city. Luckily for me, my manager had quit about a week before I left, so I wasn't missing out on anything by leaving and not being able to learn from him anymore. By the time I left, I was confident enough to add some more soft skills to my resume, so it looked a little bit more like this in my skills section. In December of 2019, I started working for an art gallery on Park Avenue in New York City. I thought this was my dream job. <laughs> I thought I had fucking made it, you guys. Like, this is all I had wanted since I really, like, got into my art degree in college. Like, I, I thought I was at the peak of, like, my career so early on, and man, was I wrong? I was getting paid $45,000 a year to be their press and publications associate. So about a $5,000 increase from my previous position. I was handling all of their photography, image rights requests, publishing, advertising, you name it. If it was image related, I was doing it for the gallery. Now, I didn't really learn a lot here in terms of creative operations or systems management, right? It was a lot of learning how a gallery runs and how galleries work, but I was really in the weeds doing a lot more technical production work, just trying to get creative and marketing collateral out the door. But I really liked it for a while because I was using all of the hard skills that I had learned in college up until now, I was really able to like put my degree to work, you know? And it felt good and I felt like I was getting paid good enough at the time. But what was gonna be really big for me 
after the art gallery was the fact that I was maintaining a connection with my old manager at the time. He lived and worked in the city as well. And what I mean by making it, like maintaining a connection is really like I was hitting him up, him up to either get coffee and he would occasionally hire me to do freelance work for him and the company that he had moved on to work for. I think that's the thing that a lot of people misconstrue about networking and maintaining connections is it doesn't have to be this big over the top thing. It's really just about like maintaining friendships with people and maybe at some point that friendship nurtures and presents an opportunity, but that's not the goal of the friendship. It's really just to like, hopefully learn something from this person and actually like enjoy spending time with them like you would with any other friend. Shocker, crazy idea, I know. But he eventually offered me a job to come work for him and I quit my job at the art gallery to go pursue that opportunity. I was officially getting out of art as a career also at this point. <laughs> So in July of 2021, I started my position as global visual merchandising and creative studio coordinator for a big French beauty company that was in like, I don't know, 10, 15 different countries at the time. The starting salary for that position was around 50 to 55K. I don't remember exactly what I was getting paid at the time. And I was working directly underneath my old manager again. And this is where my creative and marketing operations experience really started to level up from there because I was working with my old manager again and we were taking on a lot of diverse projects for this company under visual merchandising and he really taught me a lot in that position. This role was a mix of creative production and process and workflow improvement. So a mix of in the weeds technical work and also management overseeing like talking with leadership and trying to figure out what they actually need and want. The primary software we were using at the time was Airtable and Basecamp for a mix of project management and data management, as well as the entire Adobe Creative Suite, obviously for creative production. It was throughout my time in this role that I got really into SaaS products and how different software can be used in the workplace to really make my life and my coworkers' lives easier. It wasn't anything like crazy, it was just, I was interested in tools that could <laughs> help me do less, like more work and less amount of time and really just allow me to be lazy at my job, like straight up. I, I wanted to make my day-to-day -day life easier because it was so much work that we were doing and it was managed so poorly at this place. In this position, I really grew a lot. I learned how to train people, create standard operating procedures and other documentation. I learned how to communicate with managers. I learned how to speak corporate to a degree. And I learned how to like fight for what I needed in a job. I learned how to challenge people. I learned how to stand up for myself in a corporate environment, right? Because standing up for yourself at a job is very different than standing up for yourself when someone cuts in line at the movie theater, right? They're, two totally different things. After a little over a year, I was promoted to global visual merchandising assistant manager, and my salary range increased to about 60 to $65,000 per year. By the time I left, my skills looked a little bit something like this. And as you can see, I added a lot more soft skills to my resume at this point. I quit that job in February of 2023 and have been working my current job ever since then. Now I'm a senior associate of brand systems and infrastructure for a major food meal kit delivery company. Give you a hint, they sponsor a lot of YouTube channels and podcasts. Um, <laughs> I get paid just over $98,000 a year to do this job, which is a significant increase from my previous role. And if you're wondering why or how like that works and it's really just because that this is an actual competitive market rate salary for the type of work that I'm doing and also living in New York City because the same company would pay the same position less if they lived in a state like Nevada or Colorado, for example. When I started this position, the really big project that kicked off my role here was redeploying the project management system that the brand team uses. And what do I mean by redeploying the project management system? Well, 
they had a tool that they had been using for the last five years, right? It was configured by my predecessor. They identified a lot of pain points. The teams were not very happy with how it was working for them. It felt confusing. It felt like a burden to really use this tool. And so my job coming in was to fix that, was to look at the problems that were identified and find solutions to them. So basically I went in, I evaluated the tool. I talked to all of the teams that use the tool at the company, which is almost all of them. And it's a big company. I reconfigured all of the workflows, statuses, request forms, and organization of the projects in the system. I built out some new automations within it and I documented the entire thing and I created a bunch of SOPs and then I retrained all 400 plus users at the time on how to actually use and interact with the system in a way that was more meaningful to them and their jobs. And since then, I've repeated that process a few times for the different teams and tools that I manage and support. Now I know how to use a whole, whole bunch of different SaaS tools like Binder, Monday.com, Jira, Rife, Figma, Sketch, Shopflow, Make.com, Orkato, Zeppelin, you name it, right? Like whatever tool like the brand and marketing teams are using to produce and push out creative collateral, I'm in charge of managing and making sure that those tools are working as effectively as possible for our teams. And you can really see how my career trajectory has shifted from being very much in the weeds, doing the work of the production and the creative and producing collateral to now like managing and overseeing the entire process, making sure that it's happening in the most efficient way possible and making sure that the tools that we use facilitate that production as easily as possible. And, you know, part of that is also being constantly on the lookout for new tools and now I'm branching out to help other teams and help guide the development of AI systems at the company. So there's a lot of potential and plans for the future. And I'm very stoked on like the actual work that I'm doing at my job right now. Do I still want to quit? Yes. Do I still want to work for myself? Yes. That's why I started my own business. That's why I started your marketing systems. That's why I want to branch out and find clients of my own and really hone in on this marketing systems implementation business because I think there's a lot of potential and I think there's a lot of people looking for this type of skill and service. And so that's, that's, what's brought, that's what has brought me to where I'm at now. That's how I went from graduating with an art degree in 2018 to making $98,000 a year at my current position. It's been a long road, you know, six years is a lot of time. <laughs> I've put a lot of effort and energy into like learning and growing. So with that being said, if you're watching still up to this point, thank you guys. I appreciate you. You can check out all of the skills that I've mentioned at my jobs and all of my positions, I'll leave like a really long detailed list of my resume in a Notion doc below that you can check out, download for yourself and copy if you want to, really. I mean, why not? If you can go ahead, hit that subscribe button for me, hit the like button, leave a comment. Let me know if there's anything that you wish that I covered or talked about more in depth in this video and Thank you. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Man, I had a nice couple of weeks off there, but I'm happy to be recording again.